Welcome back to another episode of SMB3 Warp with Sevenar. Today's dope because we'll be covering 2-4 and 2-5. I'll be explaining why I'll be covering both levels, but the faster we jump in, the faster we'll find out. So let's get right in there. We will be starting numerically with 2-4, then we'll be covering 2-5, and from there we'll cover all the little knickknacks you should watch out for. The start of 2-4 can be a little tricky, but after a few tries you'll get comfortable. So like most levels, hold forward and B. Luckily the timing for the flying Goomba works out perfect for you to run right under him. As soon as you pass under the question block, do a medium to full ducking side jump into the Koopa. Here is where you need to watch out. If you full big jump, then you'll hit your head on the roof, which will cause Mario to start going down quicker. If you watch it in slow-mo, you can see I almost hit my head, but not quite. You don't need to cut it that close, but the closer is better. This will land you on the next red Koopa, and you can do the same medium slash big jump over the Hammer Bro. Be cautious though, the Hammer Brother has a little bit of RNG. He can move forward and backward at any time, so I'd call it safe and do more of a big jump off the second turtle. Once you either land on or go past the Hammer Bro, you'll keep running till you hit the second last set of bushes. The first bush of the two will be your visual cue to do your small jump onto the next red turtle. And from there, you'll do a medium jump, just like the start of the level, avoiding the roof. We will then go past the hammer bro and medium jump over the gap and land on the next question block. Do a medium turn back jump to avoid the plant landing on the lower block between the plant and the hammer bro. With a safe big jump over the next hammer bro, we land on the row of blocks with gaps in between them filled with coins. Just keep on running till you reach the last block, and make sure you jump down and not run down. If you run down, you'll lose P-Speed. There's too much distance between Mario and the ground for him to keep P-Speed if he were to run off the block. There will also be one more hammer bro at the end. Jump for the card before you reach the line of the white pyramid. Let's go back to the bushes jump earlier in the level. We set up the jump like this because the Hammer Brother can throw RNG at us, and we gotta be prepared. Take a look at what the Hammer Brother might do. Sometimes he's in our way, causing us to land on him. If he moves back like that, we have no other option but to land on him. But luckily we preemptive duck jumped, because if we didn't, we wouldn't have made it to the question block. And from here on out, the level's the same. Well, that's it for 2-4. It's a very short level, and according to the in-game timer, it's only 6 seconds with a 294. Can we get a 295? Let's find out. We'll have to do it as small Mario since ducking costs time. We can play all three together and see which one is faster. Now let's move on to 2-5. 2-5 is a cool level, but not so cool level. There are all these different ways to do the level, but the cost is some lame RNG. Let me start by teaching how to do the level normally, and then we can go into detail of the different ways. Start the level by holding forward and B, and do a small jump on the vertical blocks. And already I have to stop you right there and explain the RNG of the Chain Chomp. I recorded myself doing the start of the level three times in a row, and each time the Chain Chomp started in a different spot. On the third attempt, he was 100% in my way. Which means if you start the level and the chain chomp is where he was in the video, you'll have to either jump off the wooden blocks earlier, or just go a bit slower until he's done with his attack. Even in my level example, the chain chomp almost screwed me over. Well, regardless, small jump off the vertical blocks onto the question blocks, and from the first question block, small jump again down onto the sand and start building your P-Speed. When jumping down to the sand, avoid hitting the second set of brown vertical block. If you land on them and run off, then you'll have less room to build your P-Meter. Run as close as you can to the Chain Chomp block, and try and get your last P-Meter arrow to flash before jumping. Watch out, the Chain Chomp might get you though. Yay, RNG! You'll do a medium jump past the Chain Chomp up onto a single brown block, and small jump right away over the red turtle. If done correctly, your P-Meter will stay at 3 arrows once you make it over the turtle. Keep running to build more P-Speed, and run right off the blocks back onto the sand. Run a bit more till you hit the edge of the pit and small jump over. Continue running a little bit more and you should have your P-Speed. Try and medium jump up to the second set of orange blocks as soon as you get P-Speed. Cause, of course, the chain chop, I mean, could be in your way. Run to the edge and small jump up to the next set of orange blocks. And from there, fall down onto the horizontal brown blocks. 
run just a little bit and do a full big jump up and over the next red turtle to land on a single tile block. Run off that block onto the brown blocks, and again, run off those blocks to the next brown blocks. It's like running downstairs. Run a little bit more and do a full big jump past all three turtles to the next patch of sand. Jump over the single block and run to the end and hit the card. So let's just recap on a few things. Take a look at this picture showing the starting and stopping line of building slash gaining p-speed. The first line shows where you start to build it, and the second line shows where you obtain it. It seems like a complicated process of building, so luckily, you just gotta copy me. Let's take a look at a slightly easier way of building p-speed. Although most of the process is the same, however, the point where you jump past the second chain chomp, instead of small jumping over the red turtle, shoot it before you fall off the block, then continue doing everything the same. Take a look. Lastly, there is a way to build your p-speed way earlier, but it requires a ton of skill and some RNG. What you do is instead of jumping over the second chain chomp, run right into the block holding the chain chomp and try and push your p-meter to the last arrow building your p-speed. Two things. One, get lucky the chain chomp isn't in your way. And two, once you have built p-speed and jumped on the brown block, single frame jump off the block to keep p-speed. Now let's play all of them side by side and take a look at which one is faster. In World 2, you only want one hammer bro, the one with the hammer. With the two hammer bros moving at random after you beat every level, they can get into some weird places and block your path. So this is where the magic happens. Uh, both Hammer Brothers go to the same space in between the Mushroom House in level 4 and above the Sun level. They both wanted that space, so they got stuck. So now they started to move around, but they decided to come straight across level 3, which is so abnormal, because normally they like to marathon around the map, and then they come over to say hi, but this time, no, right away, which uh, actually ends up being the fastest early hammer I've ever gotten. If the hammer bro you want is down by 2-5, then you'll do 2-5 instead of 2-4 to save moving on the map. No need to do 2-4, then go all the way down to 2-5 to hit the hammer bro. Also vice versa for hammer bro being near 2-4. The hammer bros will dictate which level you'll be doing in World 2, so make sure you learn both of them. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching episode 12. I hope you learned a lot. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up and tap the subscribe button to know when episode 13 comes out. We will be doing the pyramid. Thanks all. See ya.